Vamanos. Okay, I'm sitting here with Dr. Anna Helm Bjorkman, who's one of the world's leading researchers in pet nutrition. Anna, how are you? I'm fine. I'm having a seminar and there's hundreds of people and I just love it. It's a really nice crowd. We're yeah. learning lots about pet nutrition. So, Dr. Anna, if we're going to ask anybody about pet nutrition, surely it's you as a credible scientist with a big PhD. Uh, well, I must say I got my PhD just to be able to do science in things where people don't usually do science. It was my only motivation. I love doing research and I've become quite a good scientist by this time having done it for quite many years now. Okay, what are the top benefits in your mind of feeding raw? What would be your top five? Well, actually that would not come from my science, that would come from my clinical background of feeding raw for 25 years for my patients. But if I go in there first, because that's not evidence-based, but this is uh, what we, uh, or why I've done the science, is that the great benefit I've seen is for dogs uh, with uh, skin diseases, allergy, atopy, uh, dogs with skeletal diseases, kind of, uh, I don't know what you really call them in, Engli in Eng English, but you know, like their paws going inside or outside uh, when they're growing up. Uh, I would say any type of chronic gastrointestinal diseases for dogs, I would say that those are my three, top three. Okay. Is it fair to say that prevention is better than cure? Oh, hundred times, thousand times better. I think that medicine is actually, we're, we're not in the perfect spot of medicine at the moment. Uh, what we have done is that we have changed medicine from being uh, a kind of a cure or a, uh, prevention type of, of, of uh, treatment to something nowadays which is specialized people in very very small narrow uh, venues so you go to an ophthalmologist or you go to a neurologist or you go to an inner medicine specialist or if you even go to somebody who is a specialist in fingers I mean not even an orthopedic so what we've done is that we've kind of taken the wholeness of the, our patients and this is totally the same with human medicine as it is on, on an, uh, animal medicine that we've taken kind of the overview of the patient away Yes. and we're seeing this um, uh, kind of medicine that is just so, so in so small parts so uh, you go to millions of places you get a small fix for that small thing and uh, nobody really sees that you get bad eyes because you have had too much carbohydrates in your diet and you should actually see a nutritionist so you try to fix that with the laser or getting glasses the dogs don't get glasses but we do and, uh, <laughs> thanks for clarifying that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually we do put laser glasses uh, on the dogs when we treat them with a laser for a th therapeutic glass, uh, laser which is quite fun so they actually do wear glasses sometimes but uh, yes yeah, so so we're kind of we're losing the picture a bit yes yeah absolutely well we at Bella and Duke totally agree with you um, what is your favorite piece of research you're currently working on who well, we're actually working on three very big projects and they're all my favorites. I just love all the projects I do and I only do projects I love. Awesome. Yes. So uh, we're, we're having a lot of, uh, of uh, researchers digging into this big, big food frequency questionnaire that we launched already in 2009. Okay. And that is still going on and where people can actually, they can fill it in still, it's on the internet. So we get new data in all the time. And what we're doing there is that we're looking at different life stages of their nutrition. And then we're, we're kind of asso doing, looking at the associations with that and the diseases they have. So we would look at 
if you think about epilepsy, for example, you'd look at a, a disease uh, that is starting between maybe one and three years. Atopy is the same in dogs, about one to two, three years. And so then we're looking at what they have been eating before they're that age. So we have the food from when they're like, well, we have the food from their mothers when they were lactating and pregnant and from when they were in the litter box where we have the food from what they were eating when they're like two to six months yes and then as youngsters up to one and a half years so we can look at all those different ones and then do kind of a case control study where the cases would be the ones that get atopy for example and the ones the controls are the ones that didn't get it and then we can see what happened yes and uh, and associate that with the food and I'm totally aware that this is uh, only generating the hypothesis of a possible causative cor correlation and it doesn't have to be it. So after that you have to do the diet intervention study to kind of be sure that what you saw was real. I would say that having had a frustrating week last week, I would say that I would like to talk about funding raw food diet trials. Perfect. We'd like to help you with that. That's committed to camera now. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody who watches this, one dollar, one euro or one pound down in our pockets. And how actually, would they do that? <laughs> actually, it wouldn't go to our pockets. Uh, so uh, what we're, uh, we did, we had to establish a non-profit organization, which is called Future uh, animals okay. and uh, that is a profit or non-profit organization that all the money that comes in uh, we will be able to uh, kind of uh, take in money uh, for non-profit uh, purposes and not pay taxes on them like we had to do on our crowdfundings before okay and um, which means more money for essential research to save dogs lives totally perfect Perf fabulous and this makes me think of something we learned yesterday, which we already knew, but we had somebody very eminent discussing how a high fat quality protein diet can significantly lower epilepsy. Yes, that's one of the studies that we're just writing up and that's going to be sent into publication in about two weeks. Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, one final question. How do you feed your dogs? <laughs> That's a no-brainer, isn't it? Of course, I give them raw food. Uh, I don't give them raw food only. I give them... I have a young dog who really needs treats when I go out and train him. And uh, so there I take what I have. So he might not only eat freeze-dried dog treats, but although that is my favorite, he might also eat a kibble here and there. And I don't take any problems with that because some of our de uh, early uh, results that we had actually showed that when you even have one fifth of the dog food as raw, you're already doing a good thing. So having about 3% of the dog food not raw, I think I'm doing quite a good job. Okay, yeah. awesome. <laughs> Awesome. So you heard it here first. One of the world's leading re researchers on pet nutrition. Keep it raw. <laughs>